Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a look how we can utilize the reflect blend mode to create these amazing high contrasty black and white images. Before moving on with the sample images, it might be a good idea to have a look at what the reflect blend mode exactly does in black and white. So here I have this test document which contains a gradient from black to white in the background. On top of it, I have three linked boxes with a fill, but with different blend modes. In this case, the reflect, overlay and the soft light. I have chosen the overlay and the soft light blend mode next to the reflect blend mode, as the reflect blend mode shares the same behavior, but with a twist, as we will see shortly. The grey fill used in these three boxes is also shown here at the top right. Let me quickly change the blend mode of the reflect box to normal so you can see it is just a grey fill. Perfect. Time to experiment. Keep in mind that all these boxes are linked to each other so when I change the fill of it it will apply to all of them. Now let's begin with pure black and see what happens. First thing you notice is that the overlay blend mode makes everything black with a white value of 50% or less and gradually moves to white from there. Another thing you might notice is that the reflect and the soft light blend modes have the same effect. They both kept the black and the white points and made everything in between darker. So, the thing that we can conclude from here is that if we ever wanted to make everything black below 50% white, we can use a black color in overlay blend mode. Now, let's slowly move to mid gray. Something interesting starts to happen. The overlay and the soft light blend mode are slowly losing their power, which is as expected, as 50% gray is the neutral color for them. However, the reflect starts to squeeze the mid-tones, the white and the black start growing from the sides. If we move further to the white from the mid-gray, the white even starts pushing away the mid-tones. In the overlay blend mode this time, the whites get stronger and when we reach white, everything with more than 50% white has become white. In a way, it is the opposite of what happened with black. Interesting here is that the reflect blend mode has tried to keep the black as much as possible but when 100% white is applied everything gets white. The soft light blend mode is also interesting with white. Most of the gradient has become lighter but it still preserves a small area of black tones. Quite interesting. Coming back to the reflect blend mode Especially when the blend color is around 50% grey. The whites and the blacks get stronger, but we still keep the mid-tones. It is a perfect blend mode for creating more contrast. Let's have a look at this example photo, which is already quite contrasty. Let's make it more interesting by making the contrast in the image even stronger. So, the first thing I will do is to add a fill layer from the layer menu and then selecting new fill layer. I'm going to set the color of the fill layer to black first and then apply the reflect blend mode. This darkens the image as expected. Now I can adjust the color of the fill layer and if I go over 50% white the whites will be very strong and as we know when we go to pure white everything will become white. The game here is to find the right amount of grey which doesn't kill your highlights, or the whites in this case. I think this looks pretty good. Let's have a quick look at the before and the after. As you see, with one simple fill layer, we increased the contrast and made the image much stronger. Let's have a look at another image. I'm going to apply the exact same steps First, a fill layer, set the blend mode of the fill layer to reflect and find a grey value which gets us this amazing contrast. Awesome! If I start comparing with the before, there is no question about it. We increase the drama level of this image instantly. 
Before moving on, let's also have a quick look if we apply the same fill layer with soft light and overlay blend mode. As you see, they make the image darker in a more gradual way. If you're looking for contrast, the reflect mode is the boss. Time for the next example, where I'm going to apply a bit more steps to get from this to this. So, the first thing I'm going to do is to add a fill layer with black and then apply the reflect blend mode to it. Because I used black, this will darken the image, just like the soft light blend mode. When I turn on and off the layer, I notice that the eyes have become too dark. To fix that, I'm going to add a mask to the fill layer. Using a black brush, I can mask out the eyes to bring back the sparkle in the eye. Here's an interesting tip for you. If you want to dim down the effect of the mask, you can modify its opacity, but let me share another technique with you. I can add a curves layer to the mask to control it. In order to make sure that the curves adjustment will only apply to the mask, I will need to make the mask a clipped child. Affinity does not allow to add a clipping layer to an existing clipping layer. It needs to be a parent or a child layer. The mask is currently a clip layer and I can make it a clip child layer by dragging it inside the fill layer. Because the mask is now a child layer, I can clip the curves adjustment to it. Now, when we try to change the curve, it has no effect on the mask. This is because the mask works on the alpha channel. If we set the mode of the curves adjustment to alpha, I can now control the intensity of the mask. As mentioned, I could also have used the opacity, but I wanted to share this method with you, which is useful if you have multiple masks with multiple opacities and you want to control the intensity of them. Let me know in the comments if this makes sense or not. If it doesn't, I will share a video on explaining this method in more detail. Anyway, now that we have lowered the intensity of our mask for the eyes, let's continue to remove the gray areas. Again, I will add another fill layer with black and change the blend mode to reflect. This removes the gray areas on the left. However, it also has made the face much darker. We can fix this by adding a mask and paint with black on the mask to remove the effect from the face area. Excellent. We only have some grey areas remaining on the right part of the image. This time I will add a pixel layer and just paint with black. I will change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. As you remember, pure black in overlay only makes everything below mid-grey black and gradually makes the brighter areas darker. This will allow me to draw very quickly without worrying too much where I am painting, as the overlay blend mode will take care of a smooth transition. That looks pretty amazing. To finish up, I will add a curves layer to make the highlights a bit stronger. A little bit of fine tuning and it's just awesome. Let me group the adjustments so I can turn them all off with one click so we can easily compare with the before. Cool. Let me enable my adjustments I made earlier. Here you can see I have put more shadows on the left part of the face. I can easily replicate that again by adjusting the mask of the second reflect layer. If you remember, I had masked out the face. If I paint with a grayish color on the face, we can get some shadows on the face. Not bad at all. Before I leave you, let me share this hidden gem with you. If we can use the reflect layer to give more contrast, we can also do the inverse. This depends a little bit on the image that you have. But let's have a look at this image. It is quite contrasty and especially the sky is a little bit dull. Let me enable the adjustments I created earlier. Interesting, isn't it? Let me recreate this with you. I'm going to apply the same technique as before, add the black or grey fill layer, set its blend mode to reflect and adjust the grey until you have a nice contrast. Next, I'm going to apply a merge visible, 
so I get a copy of what I see. In this new layer, I will press Command-I to invert it. Nice. Now, if I apply the soft light blend mode, have a look at that. Instead of making the image more contrasty, we made it actually flatter. This looks quite flat, of course. So, to make the image interesting again, I can add a brightness and contrast adjustment. That looks much better. Let me group these two layers. To bring back a bit more white and black, I'm going to add a curves adjustment and move the beginning and the end points of the curve. A quick look at the before and the after. Here is a bonus tip for you. If we add a blur filter, like the Gaussian blur, and apply this to the inverted image, we get this nice sharpening effect on our image. Pretty cool. What I like to do is use parts of these adjustments on the original image. So, in order to do that, I will add a mask to the group and invert it by using the command I shortcut. With as a result that nothing is applied. Now, with a white brush, I can paint back the adjustments on the areas I want, like the sky and the building. Not bad at all compared to the original. As a final touch, Let's add a curves adjustment for a little bit more contrast. Let's have a look at the before for the final time. Awesome! Hopefully this video has given you some inspiration on how the reflect blend mode can be used with black and white photos. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time. Keep safe and keep being creative.